My name is, my name is Shimon Walton, currently a member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. I represent District 10 in the Southeast Ooh. Sector here in San Francisco, Baby Gunners oh. Point, Petrella Hill, Dog Patch, Little Hollywood, Sunnydale, uh, and all the Southeastern communities. But it's a pleasure to be here this evening, uh, excited about the conversation, and sorry it will seem a little rushed, but looking forward to recommendations we're going to move forward with. And I try to get a, a little bit in it. First thing. Yeah. We appreciate that. As you see, he's very informed, and this is going to be a really good conversation. So we'll try to give Joy a few time, a few minutes to briefly talk about anything that you're working on that may be centered around reparations or anything like that. Thank you. I'm so glad you went first. That's a great <laughs> um, so at Third Street Youth Center and Clinic, um, you know we're we're focused on health equity. People don't talk about that a lot when we talk about reparations and how um, folks in my community have, have suffered from envir environmental justice issues with access to health, um, health disparities, and so we focus on health. We also focus on stability, so we um, run San Francisco's first and only transitional age youth navigation center. So we're focused, on, we're focused on housing young people who um, you know, are, are unhoused or underhoused. Justice be an issue of reparations. And what could that look like? Or I know you're in spaces with um, the reparations task force. What is the conversation around environmental justice um, in form of reparation? Well, just much like your know, redlining where you put black people or people of color in areas uh, where either nobody wanted to be or you make sure that you put them in spaces where the air quality is different, uh, where things like power plants exist, uh, most certainly where the shipyard and radiation that got out of the community, and we, we're talking specifically about Baby Gunners Point, exponentially. A lot of people who may be in this room or walking around San Francisco, most certainly walking around the country, have received transfers of wealth whether it be land, whether it be property, uh, has been passed down for generations. Those opportunities were never allowed for black people. So that's the first thing, hundreds of years of free labor with no compensation. Uh, secondly, we can just talk about San Francisco and the pushing out of black families, disintegrating uh, black communities, eminent domain homes and houses to redevelop and push black people intentionally out the city Red line. It was still tore down by racism and predatory practices. So I feel like it might have been worse uh, if they had given it. I feel like it would have been taken because things were taken from us that folks who were able to become free and, and get their property that was taken from them. So I I really don't think it might have been a little bit better, like he's saying, but honestly, without the rest of the rest of history happening, yeah. Right. yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Because one wrong thing, one hospitalization can make you b below the poverty line, right? And if you're already struggling, that's going to make you know things worse, right? And for your descendants, like those bills don't go away. So wiping out, uh, I think, medical debt um, indefinitely uh, for descendants here in San Francisco would just be a start. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think it's important to remember that this is not an isolated issue in Bayview or West Oakland. This is an issue in almost every inner city across America, which is usually predominantly low-income Black um, people that are descendants of slaves and um, disenfranchised from Jim Crow and all those different things. So with that, um, my next question is, should the conversation around reparations solely be left to local governments and state legislative legislatures? Being as though we know on the West, on the West Coast, slavery or Jim Crow, all of these different policies weren't um, as prominent or existed at all on the West Coast. So I know there's a lot of um, talk, like we have uh, Congresswoman Cori Bush, who is um, actively bringing that conversation to Congress. Um, but because you are a local leader and you are in this this conversation, are people talking about whether this should be a state issue or if it should be on the federal con congressional level? 
Thank you for the question. And one, I'm going to answer the question, and then I have to leave. But I'll take a question if you allow me after that. Um, so I think it's important to understand who I am. I am a San Francisco elected official. So I can work on passing laws that affect San Francisco. Um, and so that's why I'm excited to be in a space and a place where I have colleagues who have unanimously supported reparations and the work around reparations. And in fact, on June 9th, we'll have a budget hearing about the $50 million supplemental that I introduced to fund our Office of Reparations, a database to locate the people who are eligible. So that is coming up. But so for, so for me, it's very important to do everything I can locally. Uh, we've seen San Francisco lead on so many things uh, in the past that have turned into laws being changed across the country. Uh, when, when I ban Jewel here with my colleagues in San Francisco, we see now the company being sued by everybody in countries even ban Jewel. Um, when you know, Gavin decided to start performing same-sex marriages, and we've seen how that spread across the country, and even though they're still a battle to fight, well, certainly we've been on so much here in the city. And so my hope is that the work we do here, we're successful and the work spreads. And like we were having a conversation earlier, the work at the state is very important. The work at the federal government is very important because really for us to have true reparations for descendants of slavery, most certainly the federal, federal government has to step up and apologize and, and make amends for what happened to them here in this country. But if we can start here in San Francisco and achieve some success and, and of course get people to start understanding why it's so important and why there are so many negative outcomes for black people, uh, then I think we'll, we'll, we'll be successful in moving forward. And I'm sorry I have to leave, but I will take a question if somebody does have one for me, if that's appropriate. Undermine people's rights. What are the things that give you hope that this country is actually headed for something better than 